Good morning. The first item of business this morning is a debate on motion number 7735 in the name of Patrick Harvey on protecting public services. Uh, I'd be grateful if members wishing to speak in the debate would press their request to speak buttons now. And I call on Patrick Harvey to speak to and move the motion. You have seven minutes, Mr Harvey. Thank you, Presiding Officer. As the smallest party in this chamber, the Greens uh, have the opportunity to bring our own motions for debate to the chamber quite rarely. And so it's always a difficult decision what topic to choose, what topic to bring in our limited time for debate to the chamber. This time, though, this topic was an obvious choice. Because is there any other subject that we could bring to the chamber for debate in the current context which would not be completely overshadowed by the context of cuts. The issue of the public spending cuts being imposed by the UK government and which the Scottish government and we as a Scottish parliament have to respond would dominate a debate on higher education, would dominate a debate on housing, would dominate a debate on poverty and inequality, on health services, on jobs and the economy? Is there any subject that we could bring for debate today which would not be affected, even overshadowed, by that context? Every one of them will be profoundly affected. I would say that that context is the first great test of devolution, of whether the hopes and aspirations of the thousands, the many thousands who campaigned long and hard for a Scottish Parliament are to be realised or ignored. People didn't put in those years, those decades of work to campaign for a Scottish Parliament to give us jobs. Not to give us jobs. They didn't campaign long and hard for a Scottish Parliament so that there would be a weekly session of First Minister's questions on the telly that they could get angry at and, and rant at the telly at. They didn't even campaign long and hard for a Scottish Parliament simply out of national identity. Profoundly, the reason why this parliament exists and we are all standing debating any issue week in, week out, week out in this place is a desire, after the context of the scandal of the poll tax and the years of Tory cuts and privatisation, a desire on the part of the Scottish people for a parliament that would be able to defend Scotland against that right-wing agenda should it ever come to power again. Well, that's no longer a theory. It's a reality. The UK now has a government imposing a radical right-wing agenda of cuts, which they have no mandate for. It was never in their manifesto, never in the Tory or the Liberal manifesto. They certainly have no mandate for it in Scotland. It's ideologically driven by many on the right of the Tory party who've been gagging for an opportunity like this for years. It will clearly impact on the poorest in society. We are not all in this together, and the Osbournes and the Cleggs will be well protected from the effect of the cuts that they're imposing on the rest. And the economic risk, even aside from the, the green interpretation of economics, which I know most of you disagree with, even aside from that, in conventional economic terms, the risk of slashing the hundreds of thousands, perhaps even million jobs, which will be destroyed because of the cuts in public spending, both in the public sector and the knock-on effects in the private sector, is wildly economically risky. This parliament needs to oppose that agenda. If we're going to do so, we need not only the power to oppose that agenda, but the political will. Now, the SNP case very often is that we need more powers, more economic levers at our fingertips in order to pursue a political agenda in the face of uh, opposition from the UK. The Labour case at the moment seems to be that more powers are on their way through the Calman Commission and the Scotland Bill, uh, which has Labour support at UK level. And as for the Liberal Democrats and the Conservatives, well, they wouldn't oppose the coalition's agenda anyway because it's their own agenda. Now, we have no idea, realistically, whether the Calman powers would even help. And in any case, it'll be it'll likely to be years before we can use them. But as for the SNP case on more powers, the green response is that we have never successfully and creatively used the powers that we already have. 
One of them, the first that's mentioned in my motion, the variable rate of income tax, democratically endorsed by the public in a referendum, but successive governments have failed to maintain it. I know that it would not be popular to use, but if not now, when public services and the very principles underlying the welfare state are under attack like never before, then when? The Labour amendment in November, which was agreed by Parliament, talked about, uh, said it considers it an abuse of power for the, for the SBR to be abandoned, unacceptable for ministers to mislead Parliament and calls on the government to admit responsibility, but then said nothing about what should be done about it, what should be done to fix the situation. So my motion calls on the government to open negotiations with the UK government to restore the functionality of that power. It may still not be necessary. Greens have shown other options which exist. In the short term, raising revenue on empty properties could bring in something in the region of 75 million and removing council tax discounts for empty and second homes could add uh, a little more to that total. Scotland at the moment is the only part of the UK still giving a tax break for urban blight and using this power would not only bring in revenue to protect services but would also reduce uh, rental costs for businesses which are viable to take up those premises. In the longer term, our land value tax proposals could bring in 1.5 billion more than the council tax and business rates that they would replace. And that could be used in the first instance to protect services and eventually we'd have the freedom either to reduce LVT or to reduce income tax with that same variable rate. The theme underlying this must be the empowerment of local councils to make their own decisions because the financial powers which John Swinney and his colleagues continually call for, and I often sympathise with that call, we can create these powers for ourselves if we just empower local authorities. And beyond that, we could explore the ability of local authorities to borrow, which at the moment the Scottish Government doesn't. Now, during the debate, in closing, presiding officer, during this debate, many will focus on household budgets and the costs of housing, energy, transport, food, and so on. Green policies and many policies which have taken hold across the political spectrum would help to reduce all of those costs, but it won't happen without investment and commitment from government. And if that's going to happen, we need to have the willingness, the political will to raise revenue in order to defend against the UK government's agenda, not just the powers available, but the political will to use them. I move the motion in my name.